بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, in the Arabic language, there is a root word made up of three letters. Seen, lam, and mim. Sa, li, ma. O, sa, la, ma. If you notice, the term Islam and Muslims sounds quite similar because it also has those three letters. So for us to take a look at Islam and us being Muslims, it's important for us to go back to the root and see what it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us being the root of these three letters. So if you look at those three letters initially, you would find something interesting. The term Salima means to be saved. For example, in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Al-Muslimuna aw al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadihi. A Muslim is he whom all the other Muslims are safeguarded or saved from the evil of his tongue and his hand. So if you're a true Muslim, all the other Muslimin should never ever suffer from your tongue or from your hand. So that is the term to be safeguarded. And the idea is for us as Muslimin to be safeguarded. Not only should we be looking out for our brothers and sisters, but even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would safeguard us being from among those who have submitted unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at the term salam, it means peace. So you would achieve peace. Look, that term salam also has the same three letters. So if I were to follow Allah's instruction, I'm meant to be achieving peace. And at the same time, I'm meant to be ensuring that the others are at peace from my harm. And this is why Sallama Yusallimu, which also has the three letters, means to greet with Salam. When I see you, it's my duty to ensure that I greet you with the greeting of peace. That is also made by Salam. If I say Assalamu Alaikum, I'm referring to something very important and that is a prayer for you. I pray that peace be upon you. When someone says, may peace be upon you, isn't that a prayer for them? So we're asking Allah, can peace be upon you? Peace be upon you in what aspect of your life? In every single angle or aspect of your life. So from me, there will be peace. My prayer is even if you have other problems you are facing in your life that have perhaps usurped or taken away the peace in your life, by me greeting you, I'm actually saying, oh Allah, help this man to achieve peace. Subhanallah. This is why the hadith speaks about the importance of going out and greeting people. Greet one another. Afshus salam. Spread the salam. Spread the greeting. Spread the peace. Because we all be praying for one another. Today we have a small crisis whereby I have a small misunderstanding with you and I curse you and you curse me. And we are supposed to be called Muslimin. Where is Islam? Where is Salam? Where is the peace? Where is everything gone? Let's change that. When we say Assalamu Alaikum, my matter with you is resolved. It means, hey, peace be upon you. Forget about what just happened now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. So this is the Salam in terms of Assalamu alaikum as in the greeting. It has a very, very deep rooted meaning to it. But inshallah, we will proceed with some of the other meanings. When it comes to uh, salam connected to Islam, Islam is the name of a religion. We all know that Islam. Why? Because it is supposed to be giving you and I peace. Everyone says Islam is from salam. It's from peace. Okay. And at the same time, people are not at peace. So what is the problem? There is a problem because the name of the religion is peace and all you see around you is war. Everywhere you go, there is war. People are fighting each other. So many things in the name of Islam, things are happening. Because if you go back to the same root, you will find there is something else that is derived from it. It is called Al-Istislam. Istislam means to submit. 
To submit to what? To Allah, the one who made you. So if you want to achieve that peace, there is an ingredient. If you don't follow that, you won't achieve the peace. You know, if someone wants to make a biscuit or a cake or someone wants to, for example, achieve something, you have a, a concoction whereby you might be manufacturing something for resale that people are going to be using. You need to follow a specified method of making or manufacturing that item or it will flop. So we say, for example, I'm a Muslim. But the method to achieve that salam, that peace, we're not following it. So this is why Islam is also derived from the same salam. To say you want peace, you're greeting each other, are you genuine? There's one way of doing it. You submit and surrender to the law and the instruction of the one who made you. So if I submit to Allah, I will automatically be able to lead a life that is as straight as a pin, subhanallah. I was just thinking of a pin I saw this morning that was not so straight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. The world is changing. My brothers and sisters, it's important for, for us to ensure that we lead a straight life. As straight as possible for the sake of Allah. Wherever we have faulted, the same Islam teaches us something else. Guess what that is? A beautiful link with Allah and a beautiful relationship where we can wipe out the bad we've done by means of tawbah, by means of repentance, by means of istighfar to seek the forgiveness of Allah so if for example I have dwindled a little, a little bit I have swayed in my line with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all I need to do is quickly come back to the path so that I enjoy the salam the peace so that I'm mustaslim I'm from among those who has submitted surrendered so that when I greet you with salam it's not just a fake greeting it is a genuine feeling when I say assalamu alaikum to you, it's a feeling from my heart. My brother, I love you. You are my family. You are part and parcel of this broad ummah belonging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hence, I pray for you because the hadith says, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. None of you can call yourselves true believers. Until you really love for your brother what you love for yourself. Now it's not easy for me to give you my motor vehicle and my house and everything else. No, but at least I love that you may have something better than me perhaps. Or if you have something you love it for me. The minimum would mean or would be that I don't want to harm you. Because whatever you have is either better than what I have or not better or equivalent. So if it is equivalent, alhamdulillah, we're at par. If it is not, I, I, I make dua that you have it. I feel that you should be getting something better. So this is why I reach out to you in terms of uh, so many deeds, goodness. If someone is really poor, the charities, the zakah and so on. If not, and they have issues and problems, I am taught as a Muslim. Part of my salam and my istislam and my Islam is for me to be able to feel the pain you are going through and the joyous moments you have, I must share them as well. To feel happiness at the loss of another makes you a person who's not an ideal Muslim. To feel sadness at the profit or the gain or the goodness of another is also the same. Whereby we cannot call ourselves true mu'mineen. So the hadith says you will not be a true believer until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. So if I am telling you, assalamu alaikum, I greet you. It's, it's a prayer for you to say, look, may all forms of peace be upon you. That's what I want for you. That's what I want for you. As-salam, that alif and lam in the Arabic language has diverse meaning. Some of the meanings include to add every aspect of the word that's about to be uttered. The noun that is following the alif and lam at times, it means we want to add every aspect of that word in what I'm about to say. So if I say as-salam, I'm talking about all forms of peace. Now, if I want that inner peace, I need to surrender to Allah. If I want to surrender to Allah, I need to know a little bit about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Arabic language we say, ma huwa ma'lumun min ad bid-darura. That minimum which I definitely need to know from the religion in order for me to continue as part and parcel of this Muslim ummah. So I need to know Allah is one. I need to know His names and qualities. He, nobody shares them at all. He is alone. I render acts of worship solely and only to Him. And the rest of us, we enjoy a relationship because we are the creatures of the same Creator. So when I see an animal, even though a dog and a pig happen to be animals that may be considered differently in the Sharia, we as Muslimin are taught that we should believe that those are also creatures of the same creator. They have rights over us. It doesn't mean that because there's a pig that might be crossing you know, the road that I can hurt it, harm it, damage it, cause pain and suffering to it. Not at all. 
perhaps I won't consume it, I won't buy and sell it and so on. There are rules and regulations. But to harm a creature of Allah, no matter what it is, even if we are sacrificing or should I say for purposes of consumption, when there is a slaughter of an animal happening, it needs to happen in the most humane way. That is salam, that is istislam, that is Islam, that is everything to do with peace and to do with submission unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can I as a Muslim inflict or cause harm to the creature of the same creator? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand this. So if that is the case with animals, what about fellow human beings? If you look at a non-Muslim, for example, the time that they will look at you and see that you are in peace, you are at peace, you are within a religion of peace, they will automatically feel within them, if Allah wills, that you know what? I really have learned from this. I have seen the peace, the calm, the contentment, and I would like to inch closer by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is called da'wah. Da'wah meaning to call others, to enjoy the peace that you have. But how will we be able to call others when we haven't learnt about it, when we don't know about it ourselves? So this is why part and parcel of submission to Allah is to learn the deen, to learn the religion, to learn the Qur'an. If you are true Muslimin, myself included, we should be making an effort to learn. We should be making an effort to getting closer to Allah. Today, the world has turned the other way around because we make a great effort to earn a salary at the end of the month. We will not miss a day at work. And if we do, it's a major issue. We will find excuse notes. We will earn a salary. We will be upset if our salary is decreased. We would perhaps want promotion after promotion. We work from 8 to 5 every day during the weekdays perhaps. And even on a Saturday, a lot of us, we rest only one day maybe in the week. And at the same time, what did we achieve in return? If you look carefully, you've only, only built a little bit of your world that you might live in for a few more years. What if your eyes closed today? What did you do? The answer is, we could do better. I've done very little. Myself included. We can all do better. My brothers and sisters, we can and we should spend a little bit more time in the house of Allah. Find your salam. Find your peace. Find people greeting you. This is why we've always said, this is not my house, not yours. It's the house of Allah. People come in, they should be feeling comfortable. They should be feeling good. We look at others. Let's not make people feel uncomfortable in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are more than welcome. We, we look at them with a smile. We greet them genuinely. Assalamu alaikum, my brother. And wa alaikum assalam. The minute you start speaking about details that make a person feel a little bit negative or a bit uneasy that they don't want to come back there, we are guilty of not being the ideal Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May He grant us an opening. So my brothers and sisters, this is the salam. This is the peace. We need to learn it. We need to put it into practice. Because what's the point of knowing? Islam teaches me to stay away from alcohol, to stay away from adultery, from gambling, from pornography, from drugs, and so on and so forth. Islam teaches me to uh, ensure that the relationship with the opposite sex is within specific limits and so on, in order for me to be able to enjoy the peace. That's what it is. In order for me to be able to enjoy the peace. Take a look at those who've let themselves loose. They are the most depressed on earth, but they're doing what they want. They are clubbing every weekend. They perhaps go gambling. They have their drugs. They've got no power, or should I say they have no intention to give up bad habits, knowing that, for example, just an example, you know, with all due respect, but we have to talk about it in order to prod the people forward. For example, the bad habit of smoking, to say the least, some of us have never thought of quitting. In fact, we increase, and every time the salary comes, we say, wow, I can buy a few more, you know. For what? May Allah help us to cut out bad habits. And I'm just speaking about a bad habit. It's one that's quite common. People don't think about it as a bad habit sometimes. As Muslims, I'm supposed to be at peace. My body is supposed to be at peace from my soul and my intention and my brain. Everything should be in sync because the body is not mine. Did you ever think when you look at yourself in the mirror that one day my soul and body will be separated they're going to take this if i'm lucky they're going to bury me in a proper grave if not i might die perhaps in the oceans where nobody might ever see me again they may throw me on you know uh, over uh, and into the sea and so on i might may allah forgive us i don't even want to go through some of what can happen or cannot so if we are fortunate we're going to be buried have you thought of it that this body here 
that I'm, I, I wash my hands every morning, I make wudu, mashallah, I put a bit of cream, if there's a little crack here, I'm so, so upset and so on. The same body, what did you do about it? What, do you know your link with it? Your true link with it is actually very, very small. It's only for a few years while you're here. Allah has given it to you as a uniform. Once you graduate from this life or this college known as life, you actually have to leave that uniform here and you go back without a uniform, you're given another one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. But what we do, we lead our lives in a way that we tattoo ourselves, for example. May Allah forgive those who may have done it during ignorance. Definitely Allah forgives. Remember this. But don't make it a habit to do things to your body that are not permissible. It's not yours. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We turn to Allah. How will we achieve the salam and the peace if we have not submitted? I know what's right and wrong, but I never followed it. And then when we preach it, it is very, very difficult for people to digest from us something we are saying when they look at us and they see we're not practicing what we preach ourselves. So let's make it our habit before we remind others, ask yourself, have I you know, followed this? And this is why most of the speakers who actually remind us about what's right and wrong, they would usually say this reminder is for me as well as for yourselves. Because it is, it's for all of us. I can do better and so can you. We are all human beings. We have weaknesses perhaps on different levels. But in order to achieve the peace, we have to submit. We have to learn, submit, and then convey to others. So that it becomes something everyone speaks about. I was making mention of how when a person lets themselves loose, you know what happens? They are clubbing in the evening. They are drinking all night. They are gambling. They are perhaps on drugs. They think they are enjoying. They are dancing. They have relations with the opposite sex, adulterous or fornication, whatever else it is. And guess what? In no time, they are the most depressed people ever. They start hallucinating. They start seeing things. They start hearing things. They, they, they have a life that is, you know, they've lost their wealth. They've lost their families. They've lost everything. And they have no rules and regulations. So it's quite clear for us to realize that when Allah has stipulated rules and regulations, it's for you to lead a happy life with a smile. You've never ever compromised your brain through intoxicants. You've never ever had a nightlife where you lost yourself. You may want to have clean fun, for example, go out to a restaurant, you know, somewhere and perhaps with your family, ensuring that everything is permissible and halal in the surroundings. And as best as you can, you've made it a clean evening whereby you enjoyed. But it does not mean in order to enjoy, you need to do dirty things. You need to do that which will displease Allah because that is temporary and that is from the devil and you will never be able to achieve the salam that the entire Islam is based upon. So my brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful method of looking at the faith and the religion that we have known as Islam and how we will achieve the salam or the peace that it has in its own meaning. And this is why if you read books as to the meaning of Islam, they'll tell you Islam, two things. It means peace and submission. I'm sure you may have seen this. And the idea is to achieve peace through submission. How can you submit when you don't know what to submit to? Subhanallah. So you need to learn. And when you learn, you put into practice. And when you put into practice, you will want to see others achieving and receiving that goodness and sharing it with you. Because you realize, the more people I take with me into this peace, the greater the chances of eternal peace. This is why Allah says in the Quran, <laughs> Their greeting on the day that they meet with him will be salam. Peace. This is the eternal peace. You lived peace, you lived submission, you lived in goodness. Today you are from among those who deserves complete and eternal peace. Imagine when Allah says salam to those who, whom he has chosen for paradise. May Allah make us from amongst them. That's the day you can be happy to say, hey, I've succeeded. Alhamdulillah. For now, we're all in one struggle. And we're all trying to achieve the closeness to Allah. And this is why we say my brothers and sisters never lose hope. A lot of us may have led our lives in a way that we feel is not ideal. It's never too late. For as long as you're breathing, you're alive, you can make a change to that. You can quit your ways and habits. You will still achieve peace. This is why, for example, if you look at the rules and regulations of Islam, they include financial or economic rules and regulations which will ensure that you don't suffer, you don't struggle. If you stay away from interest, you stay away from so many different things. The hadith speaks about how important it is to budget according to your income and to downgrade your life. If you cannot afford things without batting an eyelid, you must downgrade. You know, people at one stage in this country were billionaires in Zimbabwe dollar terms, maybe trillionaires or perhaps gazillionaires, whatever it was. But at the same time, within moments, 
everything came crashing. So if we did not downgrade our lives, perhaps we would then suffer lack of salam, lack of peace. Why? Because we didn't learn how to be Muslim and how to be mustaslim, meaning to submit to Allah and how to be a person who has to protect everyone else as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So this is why we say the rules and regulations pertaining to interest, pertaining to how to deal with one another, all of that included will come about with this beautiful inner and outer peace. May Allah help us. The last point I want to raise today is, my brothers and sisters, we have a duty on our shoulders regarding the non-Muslims who are around us. We have a very big duty on our shoulders. What is it? These people are not yet Muslim. They are potential Muslim. They are people. Some of them hate Islam solely because they have misinformation. They are seeing and being bombarded by the media, seeing things that are negative. We are those who are chosen to live in their midst. We are meant to showcase Islam minimum by being proper Muslim. That's what it is. Imagine you see a Muslim, they say, but I think some Muslims drink and some of them don't drink. You say, but how do you think that? Because I see a lot of them drink. That's not supposed to be the case. But some Muslims are this and some Muslims are that. No, let us live Islam. Let us improve our character. Let us understand the hadith says, Wallahi la an yahdi Allahu bika rajulan wahidan khayrul laka min humurin naam. If Allah has chosen you to guide one person, one, it's better for you than the most expensive of the valuable items of this world. At that time, it was the red camel. Subhanallah. So imagine, let's try and... You know, these, the people around us, it's important for them to see the correct Islam. When we have goodness, when we are upright, when our dealings are upright, the way we speak is upright, we, we are involved in prayer and we do not consider it a burden. Let's be honest, the five daily prayers. A lot of us consider it a burden. We think, hey, no man, it's time for Asr now. What should I do? Especially the Fajr one. Hey, it's time for Fajr. What should I do? You know what? I need to scratch. May Allah strengthen us. May Allah make us from those who are strong. Imagine if your children or if the non-Muslims look at you or me and they start thinking to themselves, if they see us negative and they say, but these people, they are lazy to read their own prayers. Why should I be a Muslim? I've come across non-Muslims who say Islam is very good, but you guys cannot even follow your own rules and regulations. Inshallah, we can make a change to that. May Allah grant us peace in this world and the next. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly make us from among those who achieve the eternal peace on that particular day. May He grant us Jannah. Jannah is also known as the abode of peace. Wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala Muhammad.